guys, the Super Review Show here for this Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 review. That's right, folks. The movie review is here. Spoiler filled ahead. Spoilers for everything that happened in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I went to, a, I went to a, not a midnight screen, I went to an 11 o'clock showing last night um, at my local theater. And holy crap, it was, I was tired. Stayed through all the post credit scenes. There was five, indeed. Um, and it was just so much fun. I went with my girlfriend. We had a wonderful time. But this is the actual spoiler-filled review of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. That's right, folks. So, anyways, this, is the, this review will go like this. The cast rundown, the, plot re the overall plot, and then my rating of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, which is actually very, a very interesting rating. You'll like it a lot. So, here we go. The cast rundown of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 goes as follows. Chris Pratt as Star-Lord, returning once again. Zoe Saldana as Gamora. Dave Bautista as Drax the Destroyer. Vin Diesel returns as Groot. Bradley Cooper returns as Rocket Raccoon. Rocket had a very interesting role in this movie. I'll get into it. Michael Rooker as Yondu. Karen, uh, Karen Gillian uh, from Doctor Who, obviously. Uh, as Nebula, one's returning once more. Uh, we had very, we had a very interesting set of characters here. We had and two incredible actors in this film. We had Palm. I'm gonna butcher her name. Palm Kelmin Kelminatioff as Mantis. I loved her character. She was so creative. Okay, now two of the all-time greatest actors ever were in this movie. Sylvester Stallone as Stakar Ogord and Kurt Russell as Ego, Ego slash Ego the Living Planet. Okay, I told you the spoilers in this review. And the rest is follows, you know, like, um, we just, you know, like, it's Sha obviously Sean Gunn returned, James Gunn's brother, and the Ravagers were back. Like, all these characters we all love and know were back. But at the same exact time, they introduced us to these new characters so well. And um, I'm going to get into more into it in a sec, but when Sylvester Stallone showed up on screen, I put a part of my heart just like soared up. I'm a big Rocky fan. Anyways, so that's our cast rundown of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Now let's get into some overall plot points and uh, specific details regarding this film. Okay, a little bit of a preface. It does quote unquote pick up where the last one left off because like because the last one's at the very end of the movie they're like the Guardians of the Galaxy return and they just go off and they do their thing because they set up the characters very well in this case they do that but they're already like saving the galaxy and it's funny how like the the alien race that they save uh, spoilers for the post credit scene is um has a direct connection to another character that they're going to introduce soon. And he, uh, I'm very excited about that post credit scene. We'll get to that near the end. But there's a, it's a race of golden people. And it was just so cool to actually have the, it, this was a beautifully effects, uh, like effects and um, spectacle. It was a great spectacle film. But, so anyways, the, the Guardians are, 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 are on this planet and they decide, hey, and truthfully, the first thing that popped in my head about these, 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 this race is that, the people on this plant on this planet looked um, for any of you who are hardcore movie fans. And there's a 1927 film called Metropolis. There, there's a film. There's there's a, a very specific scene in that film, all those years ago that literally looked this. These characters looked individually like that one character from Metropolis. You can Google the um, the character of Metropolis. It's a golden. It looks like C three PO almost, but it's like a golden character, and um, with a crazy body, and she's really cool. But except this is like their skin. It was really the the, the effects, the skeptical, the, the, the skeptical, the spectacle, the paint. This movie is an architectural dream, okay? And I'm not gonna lie, it's really, really well put together. So then, anyways, they do that. They steal some batteries, and they're like a little pissed off with that. Then the alien. It was literally like Star Wars. They're going through everything, and then they warp through. And my my God, the funny, the the actual humor in this was jumped through so hard. The humor was pushed through so much more than the first one. The first one I think is like uh, down so funny. 
This one was just a bit more funny, in my opinion. I'll get more into, like, what comparing the two in a minute. But, look, that race was so cool. And then we leave, and the next thing you know, uh, some, weird pl some weird thing follows them into, like, a wormhole. And just like the first some kind of setup, they set up uh, that Peter Cole finds his dad. But he doesn't know that his dad is actually Ego, played by Kurt Russell. And Ego... If you're a hardcore comic book fan, if you're not a hardcore comic book fan, I'm going to tell you right now. Ego is a living planet in the Marvel comic books. Like, when they said Ego, I'm like, oh my god, they're bringing in Ego, the living planet. At first I was like, are you kidding me? They're bringing in a planet character, but they made it work really well. Kurt Russell played like the dad figure, and he explains how over thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of kids he's had with um other females of other planets he kind of like I'm trying to figure out how to word this he, uh the uh, the kurt russell character ego he said he it's really creepy he had kids with each one but each one of them has failed him over the thousands of planets across the galaxy and it was really a little twisted at some points and he's killed all of them because none of them have sust uh, sustained his true, um, you know what I mean? And not only that, so like, I'm trying to explain this the best I can. So eventually, so he is, he, he is his dad, but he's an evil dad. Go figure, Darth Vader, anyone. Um, it was really cool how they did that. And at the same time, you're seeing like the, the chemistry between Rocket and Star-Lord, how they interact, how this alien race that looks like that 1927 film that I kept thinking about looks like that. They were really, they're, 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 they're I can't, forget, I can't remember the name, but whoever's watching this, can you just leave the name of the, the, the planet that created Adam Warlock? That's the, that's the race I'm talking about. So, anyways. Um, so, uh, the Ravagers played a much more significant role in this. How Yandu's like, he's like, become soft, and then his Ravagers betray him. And, like, Sylvester Stone's like, hey, hey, yo, hey, hey, what are you doing here? And... Um, it's really, this movie just sets up a lot, but it does do a very good job of it containing a self-contained Marvel Cinematic Universe film, and I love that. Um, this movie did a really, 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 like, great job of setting up stuff, but yet containing it in its own kind of film. And the, there's going to be a Guardians of the Galaxy 3, they did confirm it, James Gunn is coming back. To write and direct, I'm a little hesitant about that, but I think seeing this, this is promising. I'm not sure how he's going to stick around with, with this kind of creative juice still. We'll see, though. Um, this movie set up a lot of things. And I'm not kidding when I say this. There are indeed five post credit scenes. There's two or three funny ones, but there's two, uh, there's two or three funny ones, but the last two... Oh my god, the, 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 one that, the only one that sticks out in my head is the Adam Warlock one. You're probably saying to yourself, Gee, what, what, who's Adam Warlock, what the heck? Adam Warlock is a character, he is a guardian of the galaxy. At one point in the comic books, he, he was very, very, very involved in, event, in the Affinity Wars. Uh, in, the, in the Infinity Gauntlet storyline. With Thanos, getting the gauntlet, Thanos got the gauntlet, and Adam Warlock was the first one to encounter this. Adam Warlock is one of the coolest, one of the coolest looking Marvel characters, and th this race introduced him through the post credit scenes. And to answer your questions, yes, the mixtape was very good. Um, I, I only recognize, I didn't recognize a lot of songs though. I was that, that's the one of the, the, my my tape packs was the first soundtrack was so cool, and this one they incorporated that same technique where it's like it's in the background, they have it in the background of their fight scenes or whatever. Um, Oh my goodness. And at the end, he gets a little iPod, and it's like, oh, three, there's 300 songs in her. And he's like, what? Um, it's just kind of cool how he shows his age. Um, another thing that I really wanted to point out here in this review was Rocket and Groot. Groot is just this little thing who's regrowing. And in one of the post credit scenes, he's back. He's halfway grown. He looks like a, a teenage Groot, if that makes any sense. It's so cool. And Groot was... Again, the, the steel. I think if I had to pick any one character that stood out to me, it might be either Ego or it might be Star Lord, surprisingly, or even just Rocket or Groot. Or, actually, I should say Drax was so funny. He was like, 
the the moment the movie starts, you're like, Zzz. Groot, uh, Drax is just like, I don't really want to wear a jetpack because my nipples will hurt. And it's, it's so funny. It's a really funny, like, if you liked the quirkiness of the first film, and if you liked what you saw in the Marvel Cinematic Universe so far, go see this. You will love it. And it does set up some other cosmic stuff. Like, um, so that's all my positives. Let me get to some negatives. There are negatives. It's not a perfect film, in my opinion, but it is definitely an enjoyable film. So I feel like they could have put... I feel like they teased... They put Sylvester Stallone's character in there to, you know, go through what he had to go through, but at the same exact time, Sylvester Stallone really did a very good job with the role he did, and apparently Marvel is coming out and saying that we have more plans for Sly in the future Marvel films, which I think is wonderful. Um, you know... And it's going to, I just, that was, that, that, I think we could have seen a little bit more of Sylvester Stallone. We did see a lot, we did have a lot of character balance. We did have a lot of that. And I think that that was really smart. The, um, there was some, um, for me, it's just this is like a side note. The soundtrack could have been a little better. I didn't recognize all the songs. I had to look up some, but I recognized by half of them. And I, I love the first soundtrack, like I said. But the second one, to me, could have been a little better. And I think having that little iPhone thing, um, the little iPod was going to really add something to the next film. So I think this should be good. Um, but overall, if I had to rate this movie at like 1 to 10, 0 to 10, whatever you want to call it, I'm going to have to say that I will give Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, despite everything I may think about it, as much as, much as I loved it, and as much as I'm drawn into the Marvel films as in, in general, um, I will give this movie... It's not a great... It's not a, it's not a 9 like the first film. The, nurse, the first film, when I walked out, I said, that's a 9. That's a perfect 9 out of 10. It shows you how great films can be, how much fun you can have in August, blah, 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 uh, at the movies. I'm going to give Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 an 8.5 out of 10. That's the first number that came out of my mouth. Because it was a little bit of a step down, but it wasn't like to like a 6, a 5, or 4. It wasn't bad at all. It was still a very enjoyable film. The way they did Ego, the way they did the Nebula and Gamora conflict was really cool. They did all these things that just touched on every Guardians fan and every Marvel Cosmic fan that I love. I love the fact that they did that. Um, and James Gunn is going to be so invested in Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy 3. So I think this is going to be, this is going to be another step in the right direction. So 8.5 out of 10 right here. What do you guys think? Did you guys go see Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2? And if you have, please leave all your thoughts in, this, in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you don't like spoilers, then by all means, why did you watch this in the first place? Um, feel free to share all your Guardians thoughts. What more do you remember about the first film? Please leave all your thoughts in, this, in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. But for all of your Guardians of the Galaxy movie reviews in a few years, and all your Marvel updates, keep it locked on the Show. J-Man, off to work.